Angels can fly because they can take themselves seriously. Gli angeli sanno volare perché sanno prendersi con leggerezza. Chesterton. Isn't it a great quote? And it's, I could stop here because the idea that in order to fly, you have to get rid of things, of weight, of commitments. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's a lesson that in Italy somehow is difficult to accept. Uh, we have a wonderful word for leggerezza. Maybe even better than lightness. But he's got a bad, leggerezza, he has a bad reputation. I wrote down a few. Ho commesso una leggerezza. What does that mean in Italian? It means I've been silly. Una persona leggera means a lightweight. Una lettura leggera, shallow. Something shallow. I read something shallow. While well, leggerezza is, is a great quality that we do not appreciate enough. So, in order to fly, you need to be light and to be leggero. How do you do that? You have to give up things, as I say. And the load is everywhere. Uh, we live heavy lives. And the moment I was asked to become... Uh, I'm not a young man, as you can see from my hair. I've been asked to, to become the editor-in-chief of a magazine. To be an editor is something that I carefully avoided all my life. I wanted to write, I wanted to travel, not to edit anything. But then there are different reasons why I decided to do that. One is that a lot of good people, young, new people I could bring along with me, and it's nice to pass things on to the next generation. And the excitement of... Uh, of bringing together different ages, different backgrounds uh, into, a, into any working environment is, is better than anything you can have in, in... And I hope that in academia and everywhere people understand that. Bring in talents, competencies and ages. Okay? And of course, they're all... Everybody's there is younger than me. And it that it should be. I'm actually... Uh, a 60 years old, just turned 60, and I decided that I had to be a bit patronizing, otherwise I'd be too good. So how can I be patronizing with my young journalists? I had one sign, only one advice for them, and it was meno e meglio. Meno e meglio is different from less is more. In English, less is more, and meno e di più. We are more sophisticated. In the Italians can be extremely sophisticated when they want to be. Meno e meglio is even better. Less is better. And how did we do that? So they have only one sign in the redazione of Corriere della Sera 7. There is only one sign and it's meno e meglio. That's me. That's a self-portrait. Please notice the... We want, you know, the editors want to do everything. Hire people, uh, come up with ideas and even draw their own portraits. Uh, What does that mean? That's a new set, right? Brand new, that's number five, came out today. Uh, it, everything is about likeness, and everything is about meno e meglio. Cover, just one thing on the cover, right? So one question that everybody asks, different, one color, one question. No, like celebrities. Celebrities are everywhere in the magazines and in the media. We don't need celebrities here. We have to ask a question and give an answer. Meno e meglio means formality or informality. It means that I am spend as much time as I can with my journalist and Sometimes I wish or we hope the editor stays in his office and doesn't come here all the time, but I do. And I encourage them, no one calls me. When they call me direttore, they, ha they have something in mind. They have something, they are being sly. They have something planned. Uh, no, when they, when they call me Beppe, I feel better. But it's important. 
I know I'm talking to a Magnifico Rettore, but think about that. Magnifico, that will be in English or in America. I know that some people in America will be listening to this. And Magnifico Rettore, can you imagine if you walk into Harvard or MIT and they call you, oh, the wonderful principal. <laughs> you be... But in Italy, it's built in. I have to say that in Politecnico, it's not the first time that I'm here. I'm very proud you invited me again. You don't have that. You use one of the, of the academic institutions, you need to realize well enough, or soon enough, sorry, that it's, it's all about lighting, it's about speed, and about coming up. And but of course, we bring something with us, and one of them is Magnifico Rettore. Wonderful. Now, I'll, from to, tomorrow, after, this afternoon, I'll go back to my office and I'll say, OK, call me Wonderful Editor. <laughs> Why not? Uh, Places. Uh, the, the person in charge of you know, fixing the office, they say, what can we bring into the office? You know, what do you need? It's 20 people and you, some of them new. What would you have to do? You, you don't have to bring anything. You have to bring out. And lots of things went out. Lots of cupboards, uh, sh uh, bookshelves, uh, and, uh, and uh, cubicles. And I say, I want everything out. And all of a sudden, the light, again that word, came into the office physically. And it's a great place to be. With a lot of young new people, you walk in and you say, wow, my son, who's 24, and therefore very wise, and he's so wise and he didn't want to become a journalist, he's a farmer, much smarter. But when he came in with his farmer look, his tattoo, and he looked, said, Dad, it looks like a, like a newspaper from a TV series. And that was a great compliment, because we look like a TV series. It's the, the way a newspaper should look, but it never, it never happened. Seth has been there for 30 years. Why? Because more books, more people, more newspaper, more shell, more everything. But places are important. Good places, nice places, beautiful places produce good, nice, beautiful ideas. Do never underestimate the importance of the place of work. You have to be happy. It doesn't have to be a, a royal or whatever. You're smiling. You say you think of your office or your lab, but it doesn't matter. You must feel comfortable. The people coming in must feel comfortable. Places are important. And again, how do you make them nice? Take out things you don't want. They're terrified. You know, I say we receive, as you imagine, a lot of books for reviews and like dozens every day, and after two weeks, books are everywhere. They're like gremlins, they attack you. <laughs> and so what I did is, you know, okay, you look, you look, you need some books, you keep some books. You can use my office as your, as your library, walk in, everybody can walk in, they know where the keys are, they, they, but do not transform this place into a pile of books. And we created a place called Furto Libero, free stealing, and everybody at Corriere can go and pick up a book. And in fact, Every book is finding a home. Isn't it wonderful? Lightness and meno e meglio and less is more means also, and that's very important, meetings. The best meetings, the, sorry, the best meeting is the one you don't have. I made a mistake. We started a meeting on Friday, and a meeting on, on Monday, then a meeting on Monday morning, and realized that we spent lives in meeting. And by the way, I have one of my journalists here. So, Stefania, you are, uh, you are the first to know that we have abolished from now on every meeting. We talk to each other as human beings. And people in meetings, what do they do? They look at their phones. I'm glad. It's a small place, and I can see all of you, and I hope I'm interesting enough, so you're looking at me, but it's lovely. Next time you go into a public speech, you go from the back, and you see all the little lights. You see, what are those lights? Oh, some people will tell, I'm tweeting, because it's so interesting. You're not tweeting. You are s s chatting on WhatsApp. You are checking your status on, or on Facebook. You're not tweeting. And even if you are, while you write your tweet, you miss half of the talk. So don't tweet, no, don't now, do it later if you want to. Okay, so what I did is, proibito usare i telefoni cellulari, strictly forbidden, 
to use your smartphones. And they look at me and say, okay, let's work. you can use your smartphone if you think you have a, 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 uh, something urgent, but you have to pay one euro every time you look at your smartphone. We put a little thing, it's got it in the form of a pig, of a violet pig, don't ask me why, where you put the money, and so every time I say, you, one euro. So now we have so much money, we're going to have a pizza tonight with that money. <laughs> because, and would you believe, first of all, one of us, she's not here at the moment, she's actually, she's probably spent half of her salary. <laughs> but that's, it works tremendously well. One, one, and then people, all of a sudden, meetings became shorter. Now they're gone all together, but they become shorter. I haven't finished. Debate. We're speaking English now, but there is one sentence that I deeply hate, disregard, despise, I'm trying to find the right word in, in Italian, is sono d'accordo ma. I agree but. When you hear I agree but means these people disagree. And it's perfectly science and everything you do in Polytechnico and newspaper comes from disagreement. Oh, holy disagreement. But say so. May I disagree? Of course, the British have their own way. Yeah, you know, yes, I think you're basically right, but, that, but, but that's, you know, the British are the British. But everybody else in the world, you disagree, you say so. Politely and with a smile on your face and say, I don't quite agree. I have to say, the, especially the younger in my, in, my, in my group, they tend to disagree a lot. But I wanted to make life easier for them. That about overcrowding, you know, means... Let's make it, what did I do? I gave them, listen to this, to, how do you say, uh, palette, like signs? You know, no, not signs, there are those things that policemen carry to stop you. It's palette in Italian, I'm afraid that my English in, on this one, I've never been a policeman in English, I've been a speaker and a writer, but not a policeman. <laughs> you know the one, one red, one green. I gave them, I picked the seven people that tend to disagree more often, and I said, instead of you know, feeling embarrassed, finding a way, spending five minutes to tell me that you don't want to do what I told you, or the idea that I propose, or the cover, or the article, it's you use your red or your green, like a traffic light. Oh, and now it's great. Why don't you do this next week? Pa, 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 red. Okay, no, good, okay, next. Okay, it's, of course, it's, uh, it's a also is to, to make you smile, to make them smile, but it's deeply serious. Give people the possibility to disagree in a likable, normal way, and your workplace will be better. Almost done. Think how much overcrowding, how many... You could apply what I, I describe my own... Uh, magazine, but you can do the problem with overcrowding means how many mails we are destroying emails because all of us receive so many mails. No matter how many filters we have, we become s we be we get so many mails that we tend to miss the important one. It's happening to me at an extraordinary speed. It never happened last year that uh, every day I miss an important mail because it's suffocated. Now that I become an editor, I receive emails. As a writer, email as a TV person, email as a book writer, email as a whatever. And now I got all the email as an editor. I threaten people and say, you don't CC me anymore. <laughs> you hate someone, BCC him. <laughs> I don't want to know. And if it's important, come and talk to me. Okay. Twitter. We are thinking. Twitter is sinking. Twitter is after it, Twitter is, is what? Eight, eight years old? It was born in 2009? I'm proud. I have more than one million followers. But it's not possible. Every time I go on television, I get insulted and offended and threatened by 20 people. And I know that some people, I hope even in this room, they think that after all, you know, there are journalists, you know, worse than I am, or at, after all, I'm, I'm a decent person. I hope so. That will be my Nobel Prize. It's not possible. Twitter has become the, the amount of hate and numbers of tweets. Look, 
I read the, la the other day, some, uh, one of the founders of Twitter said that giving everybody an op the possibility to express their opinion was a mistake. I don't think so. I don't, wanna, I don't want to think so. But I think something is done. Because again, it's overcrowding. Mail, Twitter. And it's, it's like it's a, it's a law of nature. Mail is gonna, it's gonna be, it's already being replaced by good old SMS in our, on our, in our phones, by WhatsApp, by personal communication, by, because it's, people don't, Twitter, people will simply give up. Uh, I could go on and on. Um, I'm in Italy, uh, most of you are Italians, I know that some of the people listening to this are not Italian, but I tell you there is a program, and that my little TV home nowadays is called Otto e Mezzo, with my friend and colleague Lili Gruber, and why is that, that program is working so well? And every, all the other political talk show, simply because it's less is more. Meno e meglio, it's half an hour. You can put up with a problem within the Democratic Party, for half an hour, but no more, thanks. <laughs> what, half an hour every couple of weeks is okay, but no more. But again, all this crazy program lasting four hours in any, to talk about the same things, people are giving up, simply are watching something else. The reason why football is so popular, there are, there are two reasons. Why? Because the background is green. Everything that's got a green background is refreshing, reassuring, and rest. <laughs> yes, golf, golf. Snooker, <laughs> gambling, <coughs> no Matteo Salvini, it's not for you, <laughs> that's an old, an Italian northern league, but um, okay, let me finish with this, uh, I tried to explain with mass, as much passion as I could and that it's, n it's a matter of dropping weights and giving up things in, in everything we do in our workplace, in our... Uh, but things are reassuring. Quantity is reassuring. And that's a real problem. Some people feel reassured by repeating and doing the same thing and having more of the same. I started with my magazine uh, and uh, I want to... And with a book that I, I really like you to read at some point. It's a small book. Again, Menu e Meglio, Tutto Torna. It's been, uh, the author is Isaiah Berlin. You mentioned that I've been uh, at Oxford with the grand title of Isaiah Berlin Visiting Scholar, which of course I didn't deserve, but Isaiah Berlin, who ran, who ran away because of the Nazi in, from the Baltic, Baltic states in the first half of the 20th century, and became one of the greatest political mind and literary mind of Oxford, one of the great Oxonian, uh, is a celebrity, he uh, was, he's passed away unfortunately, he wrote this book called The Hedgehog and the Fox. And uh, I'll read you just a few lines, and you know why I'm bringing this up now at the end of my little talk. There is a line among the fragments of the Greek poet Archilochus, which says, The fox knows many things, but the hedge dog knows one big thing. Scholars have differed about the correct interpretation of those dark words, which may mean no more than the fox, for all his cunning, is defeated by the hedge dog's one defense. But taken figuratively, figuratively, the words can be made to yield a sense in which they mark one of the deepest differences which divide writers and thinkers, and it may be human beings in general. It's great. It's foxes, light, fast, changing, adapting, and hedgehog, which are not bad. They do one thing, and academia, newspaper, Politics, everyone in this room can be divided into foxes and hedgehogs. Volpi e Ricci. I, uh, I, am, I think I'm a fox. And I know that I have to learn something deep, to go deep, to, be, to concentrate, or, and do well what I am doing. I have a lesson to learn from the hedgehogs. But there are many re uh, re um, lessons that the hedgehogs, the Ricci, can learn from a fox, because the fox is light and goes quickly from one thing to another. So I think more and more now is 
the time of the fox. And because te TEDx is short and to the point, my motto is meno e meglio. I think I've talked long enough. Thank you.